When we get up in the morning Along with coffee Toast and cake If you like the old stone roadie You like to wake and beg Now let's join Craig Reed and Griff Martin As we head out on the road So sit right back Buckle right in It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show It's a wake and bake morning show Good morning Good morning everybody, time to rise and shine I'm Shelby Barrett, the Stonette for the Stone Roadie Show And it's time to wake and bake with Craig Reed and Griff Martin Wake and bake number eight Stone Roadie Show number 123 action. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This Wednesday morning, this my name is Craig Reed, aka the Stone Roadie, and this is my co-host, the Rocket Scientist, Griff Martin. And uh, hey, Griff, just let me start off here by just giving an acknowledgement to a couple of late cards we got in. I got him in it last night and uh last yesterday's mail and uh i haven't checked the mail for a few days <laughs> i ain't been down there it's been been cold i just went out last night and got the mail and, and uh so uh paul harvey sent in sent in a thing uh for just he said, said it was just a donation for 20 bucks so uh he didn't acknowledge whether he wanted to be that to be a in a drawing or anything. So, you know, Paul, if you want me to put that, I would also include you as a an, um, into the next drawing. You didn't you didn't uh, make that specific, but since you sent in twenty bucks, if you choose to be in the next drawing, we'll put you as an automatic entry. And then uh, Roy Cox. You sent in ten dollars, and you said that was for the microphone uh, drawing. But uh, you know the, your cards. You know they were uh, postmarked in uh, uh, in time, but um, but uh, they got here late. And then we got a card today from uh, Robert Lamb. Yeah, sent us a, a New Year's. You know, Happy New Year card, but uh, it just got here. <laughs> so, Roy, thanks for your card, anyways. But uh, yeah, yeah, you know, mail's late. You know that we're gonna we're gonna do some more of those um, donations. We've been getting a lot of requests for those silver dollars. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Jesus for survivors. He was kind of he was kind of inquiring about maybe get uh, liking to have a. a piece of the airplane if I had a piece and I said man I, I I do have a piece that James Hughes give me down there at the at the site when I went down there but I really don't want to get rid of it. it's a small piece and and uh, he said well do you have anything off the plane actually the plane and I goes well yeah I do have those silver dollars or those two dollar bills so uh yeah, he, he said he'd like to have one of those silver dollars. So, yeah, he sent in $5,000 on that last go-around for the uh, for the um, Forgotten Survivors Fund. So I think he deserves to get a to get a, <laughs> a silver dollar from no, us. I, yeah, I would have yeah. to say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jesus for Survivor. He says, he, he says Griff, he calls Griff um, Griff the Baptist. You know, he said, yeah, that's because I squirted <laughs> my neighbor, and he sent me this. Jesus for survivors. I think he's the guy that sent me this right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he said he calls Griff. Griff they could put up a video of him with a garden hose squirting <laughs> the neighbor <laughs> before he moved. He was about to move, and the neighbor kept hassling him. As he fight before he moved, he baptized him with the garden hose. Yeah, if you guys want to see that, go to the Griff Martin files, and you can see me squirting my neighbor and him getting all upset. Jesus for survivors thought that was amusing. Yeah, so 
called him Grip the Baptist. So he calls me a disciple. He sends me stuff. He calls me Reverend Reed. Reverend <laughs> Reed. <laughs> yeah, he's a guy that deemed us disciples because, you yeah. know, we helped the survivors. So, but <laughs> you guys are all disciples too that send in all the uh, donations, you know. Oh, they sure are. Yeah. It's, uh, <clears throat> but uh, I, I got a hold of, um, called Clayton Johnson and uh and uh he changed his number and uh and then i called kevin i didn't and and clayton's with bill graham productions his his wife kind of took over bill graham Productions. he was on the plane right craig clayton was on the plane yeah clayton's clayton's real was real good friends with gary he he uh when bill bill graham actually managed leonard skinner during the beginning of the the tribute tour and that was little confusing because at that time that was right after Rossington Collins and Allen Collins and and Larkin Collins was like the manager uh, then of Gary and Allen you know and then Bill Graham came in and you know Larkin kind of was you know felt obligated to make sure that you know his son didn't wasn't getting screwed over by Bill Graham you know and then uh you know, Gene Odom was in, in, involved, you know, because he was still around trying to make sure every everything was on the up and up. You know, Gene can smell a rat in a mile away. <laughs> yeah. You know? So, you know, he's pretty got a lot of common sense when it comes to a lot of stuff like that. So Gene was, you know, and so, uh, yeah, me and Kevin, or Clayton had quite a, quite a good good talk but uh it'd been it'd been like seven years since i talked to clayton i couldn't believe it and and i asked kevin for his phone number and he had the same number i had so so uh, he 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 did have his email address but after i put his email address in my gmail it came up that i had it too but yeah he said he'd he tried to call, call me, and I changed my number, and he didn't know how to get a hold of me. So it was, uh, you know. So yeah, it was good, good, good talking to him again. We talked about things we did after the crash. We both, we both, we both worked for the stagehand union, you know. And we we were talking about our our shows we did outside of rock and roll on, on the Broadway stuff we did, you know, and how. This is different. It's just, um, you know, it's pretty cool stuff to get involved with some of that Broadway theatrical, just to see how it all operates. You know, it's pretty cool, you know, the, moving the sets in and out and stuff. It's really cool, but uh, yeah, okay, I got off on a on a jibber-jabber there. <laughs> Griff, what do you got going on this, this Wednesday morning? It's not too bad here this morning. It's, it, it, I hadn't been out. It snowed here and got cold, and, and then it rains. It does every time, and then it rains, and it all melts, and then I expect next week it'll all turn to ice, but we'll we'll see what happens there. But, yeah. yeah. So go ahead. Go, you know, what, where we got else we got going? Well, speaking of that morning. weather, I just I was talking uh, last night to uh, Chad Lane, Zach Lane's dad. You know, he's a singer for Six Gun, and his – um. His wife is a is a postal delivery person, you know, and she's been having to put chains on her tires and and uh, doing all of her deliveries. And you know, if you if you're a postal person working in out in that weather, or anybody who works out in that weather, I feel for you because I worked out in that weather. Well, it wasn't snow, but in Florida, it's just as bad mosquitoes and and heat and rain and lightning and all of that but you know you guys that work outside man that can suck but anyway craig uh so you got you got that new robe on there you know craig says he's got enough robes to do to wear a robe for every podcast for the next two years and that's a new robe and we well, want to I, 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 they, some uh, some of them uh, would have to be <clears throat> duplicates i mean uh, i got stacks of uh Hilton Kimonas and, <laughs> and stuff, but like like this one here, this is like the the uh, crescent, yeah, crescent in, yeah. So oh yeah, yeah. Hotel. 
You probably yeah, don't so, remember I, that. No, I, this is probably the only one like this I got. You know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I'm, o- I'm only into one one box so far. <laughs> well, yeah, I, gotta, I mean. Those big U-Haul things that are about that tall, I got a couple of those full. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and the thing of it is, is, is that's not the only thing that you have that's that you use. <laughs> you used to collect, you know, you got <laughs> towels, ukuleles, and, and all kinds of stuff. And oh my God, which and Craig, you know, if, for those that, that that have just started following the uh, Stone Roadie podcast, and you know, we were doing it in the evening on Wednesday, and then we started doing it in the morning, which is, you know, it's it's a little bit more interesting for people i think and uh and we also can talk about all different kinds of things but uh but yeah craig and i were uh gonna give away well we did them we did them we did them on wednesday and now we do them one day a week now we do them three times a week only we do them you know starting at six so we we thought well we'd just do them a little shorter you know just like on a monday drive says you know, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you know, on the way to work, we'll just do short ones on the way to work and entertain people on the way to work. And, and you know, they, they ain't got to be as long. And, God, my buddy said, man, I'm on my first joint and got my first cup of coffee, and <laughs> and I'm sitting back ready to hear some some from your podcast, and you guys are going, well, see you later, alligator, after a <laughs> crocodile, you know? <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but uh, man, you're asking a lot of us. Hell, well, you know, even though we've done 123 of these, you'd think we would know what we're doing, but uh, you'd be surprised. Uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's uh, kind of hard to keep people entertained. It, 50% of you is gonna bitch no matter what. We do. <laughs> yes, that's just. Uh, that nothing up against you. That's just that's just the way the world turns, you know. You can't. <laughs> I always say that you could hand out hundred dollar bills, and you could hand out a hundred hundred dollar bills, and somebody's going to get pissed off how you handed them one of the hundred dollar bills. <laughs> but yeah, and then another guy said, "Man, I missed the Wednesday thing," you know. <laughs> so, well, and that's what I said. Well, what's diff- so different about the Wednesday morning show than the Wednesday night show, except maybe the Wednesday night show's a little longer, you know, but it's not that much different, I don't think, you know. Yeah, so we're doing the uh, morning show three times a week, and then occasionally you're still doing the uh, Saturday night special with Kathy Godsey. So you're increasing your, uh, your visibility I for mean, the podcast. God, we've yeah. talked. I keep telling people, you know, if there's something about Leonard Skinner specifically you want to know, you know, just ask us. But, God, we've done 123 shows. We've covered a lot of information about, you know, about the, the Leonard Skinner individually and everything. But, you know, we still get the same questions about the same thing. And, yeah. you know, we've already covered that. So we don't know what you wanted us to cover several times, you know. <laughs> You know, so many of you say, I've watched every show, you know, <laughs> so I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny that, uh, you know, but as, as long as, as long as I keep getting the feedback I get, I, I, I find it amusing. I get calls all the time. People call me, I guess they just find my number. It's not hard to find. I've had the same number since 1957. No, <laughs> damn. Seriously, I really have since 1957. Except when I like when Clayton tried to call, I had AT and T all those years, so I switched to Spectrum, and uh, I I didn't know that I had to request getting my same number, so. They gave me a different number. I went, wait a minute. I've had that number for 65 years. You can't take my phone number away. So they, yeah, damn. You know, yeah. That was, yeah, I remember <laughs> when they had the cell phones, and and if you change your cell phone, they were telling you, well, you had to get a different number, and then they passed some kind of law. No, you can keep your number, and that was a big deal, but. Yeah, people that have, because there's a certain exchange here in this area, and I know people with cell phones that have a cell phone with 
with the uh, 330896 um, prefix to them, and that's a, you know, local, that's a kind of a local number thing, yeah. Hey, how about that uh, Daniel Barron, you know, that song that, oh, that, he, guy's that he cool. wrote us? Yeah. yeah, that was so cool. The intro to the uh, Stone Roadie Show got a new one that, you know, we'll we'll still play the other one that Bill Major sent. Um, but, yeah, that's so cool about Daniel Barron. Then he then he sent us a, a See You Later Alligator song that we put <laughs> on the end of this one so you can hear we, that, you know. We, we've... Uh, We've uh, re uh, what do you call it? Read something. We've uh, <laughs> revised the uh, the see you late alligator song. And Griff said, "I never knew that was a song. I I swear that was a song." Griff said, "I thought that was just a saying." I think I see yeah, I, I I never knew it was a song. But, uh, After a while, I crack it down. I think, but that, uh, yeah, anybody that wants to send in a. <laughs> a, a song for the opening of the stone roadie show you know we'll play that thing i try to get a lot of guys to send in uh s acoustic songs for the sunday morning acoustic but i can't seem to get anybody to want to do that uh, daniel said about. he's gonna send some man he seems you know he sees he's, he's, he says he watches every show <laughs> Yeah, so if you guys have a, an acoustic song you want to send in for Sunday morning acoustic, I've got some that uh, I've been holding on to from uh, Six Gun when we were at the Manatee Fest and I'll, uh, at the St. John's uh, bar down there. I, uh, I'll put some of that up there, but I didn't want to overload you guys with Six, six Gun songs. We just did that Manatee thing. But, uh, yeah, thanks, Daniel Barron, for the uh, – for the songs and you guys uh, send us Sunday morning acoustic uh, songs, send a, a, you know, don't use your cell phone because most of the cell phones, it's in a, it's in a portrait orientation and that don't work too well on the uh, editing software. So we like the landscape and uh, I don't know how you're going to do that, but a lot of people are figuring that out and they know that's what we need. So appreciate that. You guys send in a, a Acoustic songs for the opening. I think, I think the, the uh, correct terminology might be HD or the HD format. Maybe I don't know. It's the wide. You know, yeah, uh, you know the. Uh, it's actually Apple phones. in photo and photo. It's called portrait and landscape. You know, so yeah, it's kind of like what you see. Cell on this. phone. Everything is portrait. It's like that. We need it like this. <laughs> yeah, that, like we are and like yeah. you can see us the way we are right now. Griff's so. other camera was like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I had to get him another camera. So he's like this. So we're together. <laughs> yeah. Craig got me a new camera and a new microphone. Oh, uh, I guess I could give the camera away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it, uh, if you haven't been following we gave a microphone away that uh that was in the uh th that i used in the first half of the podcast like about 50 of them and and we and we gave that thing away and nobody really was sending in anything for it you know and then i made a hint that you know you might want to get that because uh craig was telling me i'm going to put a little something in there <laughs> and that drawing other than that microphone and that's when he put that silver dollar in there and, <laughs> and then uh the, the lady at the post office asked me about that today she followed it. she said she give away that microphone i goes yeah but <laughs> the girl the our our, our stonet from the show <laughs> ended up with it you know <laughs> so we've had two giveaways and you know kind of like that we were involved with and somebody from our show ended up winning both of them she's like <laughs> yeah. that don't look good <laughs> no. but it was shelby's mother's best friend and i think she's gonna keep the coin though because i didn't shelby say that i, I don't know I, I i asked you the other day i said i just assumed she was so, and then when you said the other day well maybe her mother's friend will want to keep that coin so then i asked shelby and she said well she said to keep everything but i'll ask her <laughs> yeah so we got more stuff to give away you know we're going to give away something and if you don't like it then i would suggest you send in whatever it is when we decide how to do it that you enter i would suggest that you enter based on something else that might go with it <laughs> 
people want them <laughs> silver dollars, you know, but I'm only going to give one more of those silver dollars away. But see, when we when we went to Las Vegas, me and me and me and, me and Ronnie went down and, and did some gambling, and and I bought six rolls of those uh, of the silver dollars, sixty dollars worth. I bought six rolls. There's ten ten dollars in a roll. I bought sixty six rolls of them, so I had sixty of those in rolls, and then I had I had a few that I had collected before that we got to Las Vegas, but they were easy to get in Las Vegas. But I did have a shitload of fifty cent pieces in my collection that were that I had collected that 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 or were were worth those silver dollars on the plane and I had a bunch of quarters too that that I still have I guess I can give I'll I'll give away a bunch of them 50 cent fee they was all on the airplane and I got a bunch of the quarters too you could actually put quarters in a necklace and have something that was on the airplane or on your yeah, and you and you get a letter of authenticity <laughs> with it too yeah yeah I just yeah. I just never uh just something that never came around. I just kind of, I had those silver dollars and I just called them lucky silver dollars and people, you know, people, you know, liked them, you know, so I sold a few of them and, and the $2 bills too, the, the, uh, you know, uh, bicentennial ones, you know, and then, uh, turns out that turns out those 1776 ones, um, there, some of them are worth money because some of them were double stamped. I just, I just, uh, I, I didn't know the difference myself because some of them are from Colorado or whatever. I never really paid attention, but recently they've some of those have but were double stamped. But I never, never really, never really paid attention to them. You know, uh, you know, but uh, apparently there did. are some of those that are worth money. Yeah, and then we um, we also we we uh, collect uh, things from people that are collectible things of Leonard Skinner, and they'll donate to us, and we'll and Craig will put it on his eBay every Sunday. He's got a new thing that goes on, and this Sunday he's doing the uh, Allen or the uh, Rossington Collins CD and the uh, backstage passes, right, Craig? Yeah, yeah. One 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 guy commented, you know, uh, commented that, that he said, uh, "I don't think those signatures are on that CD that will will they'll bring much va extra value to those." Said, "Who are those guys anyways?" <laughs> well, you know, if you are a Skinner oh. fan, uh, if you're a Skinner fan, you know who those guys are. <laughs> uh, you know, Rossington Collins, they had some pretty good hits. Uh, those guys are pretty awesome. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, was, the sticker, uh, I, you know, I haven't, I didn't check and see what the sticker, the stickers, but a lot more than the, the, the CD was going for though. Lots more stickers yes. up over a hundred dollars and the CD was like under 30 couple of days ago i don't i haven't really followed it yet. yeah so if you guys are into rossington collins memorabilia he's got them on the uh on the ebay on on he started putting them on there sunday and Derek hess and barry lee harwood signed them all so i i had them sign it for me and that was pretty cool and so and, and craig uh you know i was looking at a lot of the other comments too we can go through some of these comments um uh, on here uh and somebody was asking how do you post comments where you can see them on the show? Just post them underneath the, uh, the YouTube video that you see, just go in there, like, and subscribe, of course. Uh, and then, uh, because if you want to, if you want to, uh, win something off of here, it would be kind of dirty if you weren't subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you guys like, and subscribe and, yeah, some of these uh these people are uh are pretty funny about like one guy asked me, he goes, uh, Griff, do you partake in the ganja? Like do I smoke <laughs> weed like Craig, you know? <laughs> and, uh, see, nineteen or when was it? It was two thousand thirteen. I got hit by a by a car and a jogger found me on the side of the road and I had like a lot of major injuries and and so I've got metal in my in my back and my hip and my shoulders and 
and it ran over me pretty good. So I do every now and then like to, you know, partake in a little ganja. Like if I start feeling a little, uh, pain coming on, uh, and you know, for, uh, 40 years, I worked in aviation and had a secret clearance and you couldn't do anything like that. And then what broke the seal on that was Craig gave me a gummy. And <laughs> <laughs> and when I retired, I was going to celebrate with that gummy and, and Chad Lane said, don't, you know, or Chad Reed said, Griff, don't, you know, anything my dad's got, you better watch out he said, because it'll kill you. You know? And so, and so he goes, I, I would put a, a skull and crossbones on there. And, and he said, just take a little piece of it. And so <laughs> I took a little piece of it and I sat around and waited and nothing happened. It you know, takes a couple I, hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, <laughs> I waited 30 minutes and nothing happened. So I, I took another piece and still nothing happened. And then by the time I kept whittling away, I about a half of it was gone. And, uh, and all I remember is I went to lay down and the bed was spinning. And, and then I was like, just laying there going, just breathe and you're going to live, you know? And I was like, I, you know, cause I was by myself, you know? And I, so I was crawling around on the floor and, and, you know, I was puking and all kinds of stuff. So those edibles, man, uh, they're pretty bad. And I called Craig the next day and he goes, well, you can't die from it. <laughs> like remember when you went to the hospital because of your birthday, Craig had somebody, uh, somebody made Craig a, a birthday cake or was it cookies? Brownies. They were brownies. brownies. They put yeah. a bunch of, they put a bunch of Keith in them. Yeah. And Craig, <laughs> Craig was, was getting into it like a backhoe, you know, and he was eating. And, and next thing you know, he was catatonic on the floor. <laughs> well, my legs wouldn't work. <laughs> and they were talking there. I think even, uh, I forget who it was. Uh, it was, uh, somebody, Oh, it was, um, that girl up in Canada that, that used to be on the radio show with you. She said that somebody called her and is asking her what to do. She said, Hell, I live in Canada. I don't know what to do. And so, yeah, they took Craig to the hospital. And what did they tell you at the hospital, Craig? <laughs> oh, that was my birthday last year. <laughs> you got another one of those coming up again, don't you? Yeah, yeah, next yeah, Groundhog yeah. Day. I can't wait to see what happens that day. You know, yeah. A whole, a whole new antic. I don't think I'm going to have a party this year. Then uh, <laughs> somebody was commenting about Alan's car. They wanted to see it. You got that? Well, you can pull up Alan's car. Yeah, you know Craig? what? <sighs> yeah, um, Craig, he, uh, so what year was that car? Craig. The 1932 Plymouth three window coupe, and it belonged to Leon with and a then, rumble seat. And Leon bought it, and 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 Al, as soon as Alan seen it, he just pestered Leon until he sold it to him. Yeah, so uh, the guy was wanting to see that, and I think that that car has that been in any footage with leonard skinner was it that the one in the pepsi no, challenge no, no, no that was no. a dune buggy that yeah. there yeah cool yeah yeah i owned that car for quite a few years uh see i got it in uh 91 yeah i got it in 91 and you had you put a different engine in it right and then what, yeah. You did something else to it too. You said that you did the steering. Uh, you put a different steering. I out of a totally redid the whole thing. Yes, yeah, Steve Reynolds. I moved the engine. The engine was uh, 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 real forward, so I moved the I moved the engine back, and I had to re, uh, build motor mounts for it. And actually. Steve Reynolds is Steve Reynolds built the uh, motor mounts for me. Oh, no kidding! Mm -hmm. uh, you and Steve hung out quite a bit, huh? Yeah, somebody was saying. Oh, uh, Brandon Campbell was saying the uh, saying anybody that doubts the things that Craig has to, just needs to talk to Steve Reynolds. Steve Reynolds will tell him about the the 
the the trucks that they, that they drove up to Ohio to move Craig full of shit. <laughs> yeah, he had to help you move back home when you had to take yeah. care of your dad, right? Yeah. I sent was- I sent about fifty boxes in uh of shirts and stuff like that. I sent in a in a in a um I, I sent, I took to the Greyhound bus station and shipped them up I had the bus the bus ship them up here and then I picked them up at the Greyhound station. <laughs> <laughs> about fifth i swear there were <laughs> anybody wants to know who steve reynolds was he was in one of our podcasts and he uh actually he uh had one of alan's guitars that alan broke and craig uh and joe barnes was it joe barnes you guys fought it from the crowd to get that yeah i had broken ronnie threw it in the crowd and i leaped in the crowd and grabbed it by the neck and and fought the crowd back for it and then yeah yeah and then uh <laughs> and and then, we ended up getting it back yeah and larkin gave it it was in the attic uh at alan's house when he died and larkin gave it to uh to steve and he had some guy fix the neck on it but the whole story uh, you go back and look at that steve reynolds we did a uh we actually went to the uh, the Hell House property by boat with Steve Reynolds, and that's a really cool podcast. And we went through Black Creek and down Peters Creek, and the same way you guys used to go whenever you had uh, Bad Company, the boat, which was pretty cool. Steve's a, a cool guy. So, yeah, back to these comments here. Um, uh Somebody was asking me about this. I, I think they said, what's that drawing behind you? And I think they're talking about this thing right here, um, which Brian Bodkin has a buddy who uh, takes, if you've got an album, then he'll take the record, the vinyl record out of it, and he'll cut this design, whatever design you have out of it, and uh you know then he frames it and um it's called vita nova vinyl owner josh allison in uh, huntsville alabama 256-323-9841 if you want to get you one of these and he said well you're gonna give that away i don't know we might give this away uh this album this uh came from uh my ex-girlfriend gave me this and I gave it to Brian and, uh, he, he cut that it's supposed to be me and Craig right there, you know, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the rocket scientist and, and the stone roadie. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And maybe we'll give that away, but if you guys want to get one of those, you can get one of those. We so, yeah, that's had all kind of stuff to give away. I, that Dave, you sent you sent me a bunch of those uh, live at the Fox uh, pictures. Uh, we can, oh, yeah, Dave the I Disciple, the guy that does all our graphic stuff. Yeah. Um, we can give one of those away. Well, there's a bunch of stuff we can give away. Then we were talking about, um, oh, yeah, you found a whole box of T-shirts, you said, from... Uh, Oh, I was up in the attic looking for robes, and I saw, saw something white, and I... I grabbed down and I found a, there's a whole stack of Leonard Skinner 1992, I think, t shirts that I don't know. They were yeah. just white. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Craig's going through his stuff. You know, y'all get ready, man. It might be, it might be worth it, you know, to just to, to enter these contests, which uh, I think are pretty cool because all that stuff's collectible, especially when Craig gives you a letter of authenticity on it. So. It's kind of like uh, bidding on eBay, and you don't have to pay for it. Yeah. And we were another the guy was mentioning something about uh, the uh, Freebird, the first Freebird song with Ricky Medlock. And uh, Greg, you was telling me that Ronnie. Oh fell- no, that was uh, I'm the one that actually cousin cousin Figel posted those on uh, yeah on, that's on right fake book, and it was a call song called Seasons. And Ricky was singing it, and, and yeah, and uh, I said it had to be Ricky because Ronnie can't sing that high, and then uh, yeah, and then he also 
found the original version of uh, Freebird where Billy Billy was just all he had was just a Wurlitzer and he just played just a really simple simple little uh, piano part nothing extravagant like you hear today it was just a real simple little thing on a Wurlitzer yeah but you were telling me that Ronnie felt a little threatened by Ricky, and that's why he might have gotten I, rid of him. That's my personal opinion because uh, uh, I I I just kind of think knowing Ronnie, uh, and then and then Ricky was around, and Ronnie wanted to be the was the leader of the band, and he you know, and I think he felt a little. I think he felt a little intimidated because Ricky's voice was maybe a little better than his. And at that time, you know, Ronnie wasn't as secure with himself as he was after he had written all those hit songs. You know, that was real early in his career, and he really wasn't secure with his self, his voice, and everything, and I don't feel like he felt like having Ricky around was advantageous to his career. You know, you know, thinking that if Ricky made it on a on a a, a song that was a hit, it would kind of put him in the back seat or something. You know, and I can I can see where that happens. You know, especially mm -hmm. early in his career. You know, because that was like, that was before the first album. That was, you know, right before the first album. But then when Steve Gaines came around, he, he kind of welcomed that because he was needing a break from singing. Well, huh? yeah, but they kind of co-sang stuff too, you know. Yeah, they sang together, which, you know, those both those guys, Steve Gaines and Ricky Medlock, are really good singers, you know. They uh, they contributed a lot. You know, Ricky's got a great voice, I think, Um and so it's, you know, yeah, it's a it's different than Ronnie's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a pretty talented guy. Uh, speaking of good singers, another somebody commented on how great Seda Davidson uh, sings, and when she was at the uh, Manatee Fest, and man, you know, she's such a a small little girl, and you know, she's only seventeen, and just hear that voice come out of her <laughs> is is amazing, you know, and. Uh, and she's so polished with it. And when we were in the uh, St. John's Saloon down there, I recorded a lot of that uh, stuff. And it, you can't, you can't really, you can't really hear it as as well as you'd like to, being how the uh, the acoustics in there aren't so great. But I'll put that up on the Sunday morning acoustic. You can hear some more of. Uh, of say to Davidson. And then if you want to go uh, back and look at our, at our podcast where the manatee fest, where they were headlining there, you can hear Seda and Derek Hess playing drums and, and, uh, and you can also go on the Griff Martin files and look at it there. And, uh, another guy said, Griff, you did a great job recording that. And, uh, yeah, I just got a little a little uh, digital recorder that I use that I do on the road with Griff Martin, and and I record this about every one of those songs. And man, I was getting tired. <laughs> it was about to kill me, you know. It was a, uh, you know, you you stand there and trying to hold that uh, that camera for so long, and and then you know after a while you start stoving up. But uh, I appreciate that, you know, because I do I do work hard on the on the road stuff and uh, uh but yeah so thanks for the for the for the compliment on that and say to davison you'll be hearing some more of her and i guess six gun they're kind of like uh probably taking a little bit of a break right now but if you guys ever want to hire those guys get in touch with us because because uh you know they they'll play local but they'll also they'll they'll boom out if you guys want to uh want to uh hire them or anything and they've got a website, so uh, I think Zach Lane. Uh, you can look on Facebook and and get and get a hold of him through through uh, Facebook that way. But uh, yeah, so yeah, that's about all the comments we got here, Craig, to go through. Anything else that you're wanting to talk about? No, no, uh -uh, no. This is right here where was it? Sammy told you said, "Man, I just got my coffee in now." <laughs> now <you're> <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. 
Yeah, he said, man, I just, just, you know, just got my. But, but we got to edit this thing and get it out because we get up early, man, and we got to edit this thing and get it out. So that's why we get to get off of here, you know. <laughs> and then Craig goes back to bed. Cause I'll call him and I'll say, Craig, man, what are you doing? Uh, I'm just laying here right now. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. So, so I yeah. guess we'll wrap up another one here and uh, another, uh, and you get to hear that ending song too, you know? Yeah, uh, man. I'm, uh, that's, that's funny. Yeah. That's, uh, really appreciate it. Yeah. And anybody else, you know, because we just kind of like ask somebody to write us a song and like, you know, you know, poof, all of a sudden somebody writes us a song and, you know, <laughs> sure somebody else has got an idea, you know, I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah, I've got a few Sunday morning acoustics that I'm, that I'm waiting to get a few of them gathered up so I can put them uh all in one bundle so if you did send me something then i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna work it in i just want to get some more so uh yeah be be keeping an eye out for that sunday morning acoustic it's gonna happen yeah just yeah just you know somebody come up with a, 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 a what is it about 10 seconds and for an in, uh, intro and then a 10 seconds for an exit of even if that, you know, just a little in and out song, you know, something clever. You know, yeah. Something. <laughs> Don't have yeah, to we'll, be we'll put it on there and we'll laugh at it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something. Although Daniel did it. Don't a great have to job. be a whole song, just something, an in and an out or just a, just an in or just an out or whatever, you know, just yeah. something funny and clever. Something to make somebody laugh, ha ha, make their day, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All righty oh. then, yeah. Nothing like a morning buzz with the Wake and Bake show. And this has been the Stone Roadies show. And I guess, uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on the Stone Roadies show. And until then, happy trails. May the good Lord take a liking to you, and we're out of here later. And see you later. See you later, alligator. Happy wild crocodile. See you later, alligator. Happy wild crocodile. Craig and Griff will see you next time. Until then